We're going to jump today from linear equations to quadratic equations, quadratic functions. Quadratic functions are of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, otherwise known as parabolas. In a quadratic function, we get, once again, a graph of a parabola. These parabolas have vertices, which are either minimum values or maximum values, since they only dip once or rise once. Typically, we will have intercepts if they cross an axis, and we will have a line of symmetry which goes through the vertex and has some general equation. Since we're talking about functions, these are all going to be parabolas that either go up or down. One of the things that dictates whether it goes up or down is if A is positive, it will rise. If A is negative, it will fall. Thus, we'll have a minimum value in this case and a maximum value in this case. So what we're going to do first is we're going to graph a parabola given in the standard or general quadratic form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Remember back from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 that one of the things we're going to need to do is find a vertex. So in order to find a vertex, I first find the x component of that vertex. I call it v sub x. That's equal to negative b over 2a. So in this case, I find my b term, which is 4. I take the opposite of that, put that over 2 times the a value, which is negative 2, and I end up with 1. To find my y component of the vertex, I plug my v sub x value into f of x for x. So in this case, I have negative 2 times 1 quantity squared plus 4 times 1 plus 7 will give me my y value of the vertex. So I have negative 2 plus 4 plus 7 or 9. So in this case, I have a vertex of 1 and 9. I'm going to take and graph that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, around here. Okay. And from here, I know that since my A value is negative, this is going to go down. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a little knowledge that we have from previous examples of graphing translations. My a value is equal to negative 2. This is a y multiplier. And it multiplies any parabolic equation or any quadratic and its y value by negative 2. So my general pattern for any parabola is 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, and 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. I'm going to multiply all these by a negative 2. That's giving me negative 8, negative 2, 0, negative 2, and negative 8. So this vertex acts as my new origin. From here I'm going to go over 1 and down 2 in both directions and then over 2 and down 8 in both directions and call that my graph. And that will not very good but parabola. All right. I know this has maximum value and my maximum is given by my y value, and it occurs at an x coordinate of 1. 
So in this case, I can also check a point just to make sure I'm correct. This is the point 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And if you notice, I plug a 0 into this equation. First term goes to 0, second term goes to 0, I'm left with 7. I must have graphed it correctly. So once again, x coordinate, y coordinate of the vertex. Use the pattern of ax squared. And then graph from the new vertex. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this quadratic of a form ax squared plus bx plus c by first transforming it into the hk form, in which case we'll find our vertex and our pattern all in one shot. I know my a value in this case has a value of positive 1. Therefore, it's going to go up, and it's going to have a pattern of 1x squared for y. But I need to find my vertex, and I'm going to do it without using my v sub x, v sub y form. To do this, I'm going to complete the square. If you remember, in completing the square, the first step is to isolate your variable terms. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring the 4 right outside. And then, in completing the square, you take your b term and find half of that. Once you found half of your b term, you take and square it. So in this case, I have 3 squared or 9. Now, what I've just done is I've created a value that will take and make a perfect square. So I have x squared plus 6x plus 9. However, we'll notice I've added 9 to the right side of the equation. i got to keep this balanced. I can't just add 9 for the heck of it. So what I'll do is on the outside of that parentheses, I'll subtract 9, and thus my net result is adding 0. So what I have is I have a factorable perfect square here of x plus 3, quantity squared, and then 4 minus 9 is 5. So notice I have a quadratic form that gives me an h value of negative 3 and a k value of negative 5. In other words, I move to the left and down. Given that, if I go back 3 and down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and put my vertex there, and now use my pattern of 1x squared, which we just went through, of 2, 4, 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4. And graph that from this point. Here's over 1, up 1 over 2 up 4, I have my problem. This goes through the point negative 1, negative 1, and I'll check that just to make sure. So I have negative 1 quantity squared, and remember I'm plugging back in to the original equation to make sure this works, plus 6 times negative 1 plus 4. I want to get negative 1 out. I have a 1 minus 6 plus 4, which yields negative 1, so I must have graphed it correctly. We're going to do the same thing by converting to vertex form. However, you'll notice in this case we have an A term of positive 3, which means, again, I'm going to go up, and I have a pattern of y equals 3x squared plug numbers into that in a minute. 
In order to complete the square here, what I must first do is get the coefficient in front of x squared to be 1. So in order to do that, as previously done, I'll isolate my variable terms, put my 8 on the outside. Now to get that coefficient of 1, I'm going to factor out a 3. Fortunately, it goes into the 12 evenly, and I don't have to deal with nasty fractions. I'll take half that middle term and square it, which gives me a value of 4. So in this case, I have f of x equaling 3 times x squared plus 4x plus 4. Add 8 to it, but once again, I've added a 4 here. But have I really added a 4? If you notice, this 4 is linked with this 3 because of this multiplication to the quantity. So I've really added 12. So I've got to balance that out by subtracting 12 to the outside part of those parentheses. Therefore, I have 3 times x plus 2 quantity squared minus 4. h equals negative 2. k equals negative 4. That's a left translation and a down translation once again. Over 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my vertex. And in this case, I'll take and graph that from here. But in order to graph it, I have to look at my basic formula of y equals x squared, which is 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. I've seen this over and over again. And this time I'm going to multiply all my y values by 3. So I get 12, 3, 0, 3, and 12. So here's over 1 and up 3 on both sides, and over 2 and up 12. And right around here. And there's my parabola. However, the second part of this equation asks that I take and find the x-intercepts. Well, to find the x-intercepts, I know y equals 0. So if I set y equal to 0 and solve this, I've found those Intercepts. Now you'll notice that these intercepts don't look like integers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and go to the quadratic form. That will solve any quadratic. I could try to factor it, but I don't think it's going to factor. Could, but I don't think it's going to work. So let's go to the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And that will solve for x. So in this case, what I've got is I've got opposite of b or the opposite of 12 plus or minus square root of 144 because that's 12 squared minus 4 times 3 times 8 over 2 times 3. So in this case, we have negative 12 plus or minus, that's 144 minus 96, and 144 minus 96 is 48, over 6. Clean this up a little bit. Find the exact value, so that's negative 12 plus or minus 
perfect squares inside of 48. I know that's 16 and 3, so that's 4 roots of 3 over 6. I know I can also take and factor a 2 out of both of those. So a 2 comes out. That's negative 6 plus 2 roots of 3 over 6. And that's going to reduce as well. So I have negative 6 plus 2 roots of 3 over 3. And those are my x-intercepts. In the exact form, I can get decimal approximations by plugging that into our calculator, but I prefer that we go with exact values. Our last problem, we're asked to write an equation from a graph. And that equation is a quadratic function, so unless otherwise stated, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, you'll notice we have to come up with an a, b, and c value for this problem. And there's, there's a couple of ways we can do this. I prefer to, first of all, find out what I have as a vertex. And in this case, it's 2, 3. I also want to know if I have any other points that this goes through, and I've given you one right here of 1, negative 1. Now, granted, I want to work towards this function here. But what I have is I have a vertex, and I have a point. So what I could do is use the equation y equals a times the quantity of x minus h squared plus k. Because I know three of the missing, or two of the three missing variables. The only thing I don't have is a. Watch what happens. I don't have a. I don't have the x value. But I have the translated h value. h is two in this case. And I have the translated y value of the vertex of three. Now, granted, I still have three unknowns, an x, a y, and an a. But because I have this point, one negative one, that the function goes through, I have an x and y, which means I can find my a value. y is equal to negative one. a we still don't know x is 1 minus 2 squared plus 3. Bring the 3 over, I have negative 4 equals a, because negative 1 squared is 1. So a is equal to negative 4. Therefore, I have y equals negative 4 x minus 2 squared plus 3, which makes a lot of sense since, it's open, since it opens down, the a value must be negative. But it's not in this form of ax squared plus bx plus c. I can get it in this form by foiling this out and combining like terms. So let's do it. Negative 4 times x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 3, which is negative 4x squared plus 16x. minus 16 plus 3, or in the end, y equals negative 4x squared plus 16x minus 13. And there is my a, my b, and my c value. So that's a wrap. Fill out the summary form. Go to my math lab, solve these sign problems, and I'll see you tomorrow.